Hi everyone, this is going to be a rather quick review on a nutrition fact panel, how to read it. This can become really a useful tool when you're trying to select different products for kids and optimizing their nutritional intake. There's a couple things that you're always going to find on a food label, and food labels are actually changing, so you might notice this is our old food label, but they're still going to be floating around out there. So there's five requirements that you'll find on every single food label. One would be the serving size and the servings per container. So this is a big misconception for a lot of people because they don't realize that if they eat the entire container, it might be more than just one serving. You'll also find the calories and then different nutrients that are selected that are required to be listed, vitamins and minerals, and then the percent daily value. The percent daily value is based off of the RDAs, and the RDA, again, is telling you how much vitamin A or vitamin C or calcium or iron that you're required to have within one day. So this little percent right here is the daily value. So essentially, this product, if you were to have one serving size or two-thirds of a cup, it would meet 10% of your 100% requirement for vitamin A. Now, this is all based off of a 2,000-calorie diet, so there are some limitations. For those that need more calories, this would be less than 10%, and then those that need less calories, this would be more than 10% of their daily value for the RDA. So here is the um, old food label on the left and the new food label on the right sitting side by side. So I want you to pause and look over the food label and identify some things that are a little bit different between the old food label and the new food label. So here, one of the biggest things that you can see is that the calories are big and bold. The serving size is big and bold. And then you might have caught that now they're going to include added sugars right here. So this is a really important piece because right now on this old food label, the only way for us to find added sugars is to look at the ingredient list. And not a lot of people understand what synonyms are for added sugars. So for example, honey could be a synonym for an added sugar. In addition, they also change the vitamins and minerals that are required to be on every food label. You're only required to have these four, vitamin D, calcium, iron, and potassium. The reason for this is because the average American diet is lacking these four vitamins and minerals, so they wanted to bring more awareness and identify foods that are going to have a high percent daily value. So your goal really is to include foods that are very high percent daily value of vitamins and minerals, and then a low percentage for your saturated fats. So let's go ahead and look at the ingredient list. The ingredient list can be one of the best resources on the Nutrition Facts panel. They're going to be listed in order by descending weight. So essentially what that means in this particular product, whole grain wheat is the most by weight in comparison to corn bran or raisins or sugar. So each one of these little red lines here represent added sugar. So this is something where when you have the old food label, you're going to have to look for to see how much added sugar is there versus naturally occurring sugar. We want to have naturally occurring sugars in our diets, but we want to limit the amount of added sugars that are in our diets. Now a way that food companies get around this is by using multiple types of sugar so that they don't have to list it as the very first ingredient. Whether that sugar is coming from honey or agave nectar or corn syrup or just plain cane sugar, it's all considered added sugar and it's going to be processed the exact same way in the body. Here's a whole laundry list of some added sugar synonyms that you might find on a food label. So for now, we want to make sure if you're looking at the old food label to look at that ingredient list to ensure that most of the sugars are coming from natural sources and none of these added sugars. So let's talk about the difference between an added sugar and a naturally occurring sugar. This one's pretty easy to identify when we compare a donut and an apple. So for example, the donut is going to have added sugars. You have the granulated sugar, maybe some brown sugar, and so forth. Where the sugars that are found in your apple are going to be those complex carbohydrates forming that carb, essentially. So you're going to get fructose, which is the main sugar that's found in fruit, but it's naturally occurring. Our bodies process this donut and this apple very differently. We have the ability to regulate our blood sugars, and the donut is going to raise our blood sugars very high, where the apple won't raise it as much because of the fiber, so it helps to slow down the absorption of those sugars. That's why we want to consume more naturally occurring sugars and limit the amount of added sugars that we have in our diets. 
In fact, the new dietary guidelines of 2015-2020 tell us that we should limit our total calorie intake to less than 10% coming from added sugars. Another example that I would like to give is added sugar and naturally occurring sugar can happen together. So take chocolate milk, for example. Chocolate milk is going to have naturally occurring sugars from your plain white milk. But the moment that we add in that chocolate powder or that chocolate syrup, that's going to be considered added sugar. So the old food label wouldn't be able to tell you how much sugar is coming from the chocolate syrup piece and then how much is coming from the plain white milk. Now that's going to be able to show you and you'll be able to make better, smarter choices. So in your outline, I want you to compare these two products and I want you to decide based off of the food label, which do you think is the better snack for kids? There is a hyperlink within that document. So if it's hard to read this, like I know the ingredient list on the wheat thins is kind of challenging to see, you can select why you think that the Annie's might be better or why you think that the wheat thins might be better. And I want you to give specific reasons as to why you would offer one snack over the other. In addition, I want you to also comment about what might be misleading on some of the um, visuals and some of the buzzwords that are on the front of these packages. So let's talk a little bit about those buzzwords. These are all considered health claims. There's a variety of different health claims that can be used, and the FDA does have to have some regulation over this. However, they can still be very misleading to the consumer. So there has to be a large enough evidence-based practice in order to say, for example, whole grains can reduce your risk of cardiovascular disease. That's well established in the literature. Other things that are not so established are things like the word natural. There's actually no true definition on what natural means in regards to our food system. So let's look at this product. So at first glance, what do you think? Most people look at this and they say, oh, it's green juice. That's really good. It's healthy for me. It's naked. That means it's probably natural. I see lots of vegetables and fruits pictured. And it also says no sugar added. So let's go ahead and be our little investigators now that we know how to use our food label. So when we look at the food label, we can identify a few things, starting with the amount of sugar that's contained in this product. So, but we want to make sure that we can look at the amount of servings per container. So that means there's two servings per container. So if I were to drink the whole container, I would have 56 grams of sugar. Now, right now, this sugar is not going to tell me if it's considered added or natural, so I need to look at that ingredient list. When I go to that ingredient list, I can see that they're all coming from fruits and vegetables. However, this product is really misleading because you're essentially just drinking fruit juice, when in fact that you think you're drinking vegetables. And the problem with this is that it's significantly lacking the dietary fiber. Dietary fiber helps to slow the absorption of these sugars, so drinking this naked juice is almost equivalent to drinking a can of soda because it has no way of slowing down that absorption rate. So it's going to increase our blood sugars very, very quickly. And long term, if we continue to do that, we put ourselves at risk for developing type 2 diabetes. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, we should have soda all the time or that we should never have this because this juice will give you a lot of vitamins and minerals that the soda would not, but it's still in that liquid form and it's lacking the dietary fiber you're better off consuming the whole fruits and vegetables for optimal health. So we can use the product to compare like products. 